All right. Hi, everyone. Jen here. Welcome to this training on using LinkedIn Sales Navigator to create account lists. So at this point, you should have already seen the training on LinkedIn Sales Navigator lead lists, so creating lists of leads using Sales Navigator. And this is the second part of that training on how to create accounts, uh, account lists or otherwise like company lists using Sales Navigator. So what I'm going to cover in this training is thinking about what type of company you should search for even in the first place, and then how the company or account filters differ from lead filters. And there's a few extra ones. So we can search by revenue. We can search by things like department and headcount growth or decline. And then there's similar criteria such as industry, geography, and fortune lists and things. So yeah, probably the biggest power of the account list is that you're able to see a little bit more about the events of the company, such as growth, decline, change of leadership, stuff like that. And, and then of course, using that data, we're able to then move to find the decision makers and save them to lists. In the end, you're able to extract email, phone number, other information about those leads and, and use that for follow-up. So why would we create account lists as opposed to just creating lead lists, it really depends on your need for LinkedIn. So of course, you can stay with just finding leads, individuals by their title, um, looking just directly for the decision maker. However, in a lot of cases, sometimes we won't even know who the decision maker is. And there could be a gray line between a number of different decision makers in a company. And the larger the company, the more important it is to have several leads that you're reaching out to at once within the company to try and find the right decision maker. Also, it's a powerful way of just filtering by companies according to demographics such as revenue size and things so that you are able to exclude companies that are probably not even going to consider your, your service offering, and then going to the decision maker after that. So instead of going straight to a decision maker and trying to figure out if their company would even have the budget to, to work with you, you go first to the company, filter them by their size and their revenue, and then after that, go to the decision maker. And essentially, all of these things are just giving you options of shortening the sales cycle getting more precision with your outreach, getting more precision with your research, being able to personalize and target people in a, in a more sophisticated way and essentially land more deals. Yeah, it's just a more powerful way to improve and fill out your lead search. So when we start to think about which companies we want to target to begin with, questions to ask yourself are things like, not only is it you know the industry or niche that I specialize in or the size of the company, but think about things like, are they already spending money on this? And do we know how much and therefore can they afford you? So for example, if you know that a company is turning over several million dollars a year and in your experience, you know that that type of company has already earmarked a marketing budget of about a hundred grand or more, then that puts them in the bracket of the type of company that's already spending money on marketing and they're in the bracket of someone who can afford a $1,000 or $2,000 retainer for your services should you be able to land a meeting with them and prove that you're superior to your competition. Other things to consider are, is the decision maker easily accessible? Now, the more senior we go within large companies, the more and more difficult it is to just access directly a, a very senior decision maker. And then of course, that affects your strategy. So for example, if you're going to a C-suite level of a Fortune 500 or higher company, you may not get a cold meeting with a CXO but you may get a cold meeting with somebody junior to them who's a big advocate of the service that you provide, who's able to handle those internal relationships and take your conversation internally up the ladder to, to reach the senior decision makers. So you need really need to weigh up who are you targeting, Who, but not only who's the end decision maker, but who is the most easily accessible decision maker within that company. And being able to map those internal relationships is something that Sales Navigator is able to do. And I'll be able to show you that. Of course, playing into that is the person that you reach, are they aware of the problem and are they motivated to fix your problem? So a more junior person can be highly motivated to fix the problem. Really what you need is an internal champion within the company to help you navigate those internal relationships and take that proposal to the senior decision maker who has actually the, the authority to sign off on a deal. And then the other things you need to consider when eliminating potential companies is 
you know, are they the type of company that you can get results for? Are they already predisposed to your offer? So you don't want to be targeting too too big or too small if, if you can't even get results for them or they don't even really care about your offer. So all of these things come to play when we're targeting the right company. Typically, the decision maker title will change according to the size of company that you're targeting. So if small businesses, typically it's the owner. If it's the tech world, it's the founder, things like that. The bigger you go, once you start to get to the medium sized business, which is, you know, it's variable, but 100 to 500 employees, you're not only targeting the owner, but the people like the GM, general manager, you get think, titles like COO, CMO, operations manager, sales manager, human resource managers, department heads, things like that. And then, of course, the larger you go, 500, 1000 and plus, this is where you're getting more tiered level of decision makers. So you get your VPs, your senior VPs, your executives, and then all types of manager levels and all types of department levels. So you get to, you need to be a little bit more nuanced about the type of person and the type of title that you're reaching out to. Of course, nonprofits and things like that are their own their own thing. And you have to be reaching out rather to like board members or executive members there. All right. So when we look at our account filters, we're going to start to look at headcount, not only for the company, but also by the department. You can look at headcount growth or decline. You can look at things like annual revenue, whether they're on fortune list technologies used and things like that. So let's just go over and look at a, an example search. What I'm going to do is actually use a similar search to what we used for the lead list creation, just for simplicity. So we're going to look at an account search for senior leaders in agile coaching and training, and we're going to be using similar criteria. However, when we're looking at account search, there are a few other criteria here. So we're going to be looking at company headcount, 500 to 5,000. We've now got revenue coming to play, and we're looking at um, department headcount growth and things like that. So if we go over to LinkedIn and we open up Sales Navigator over here, Again, you've got this interface of lead and account filters. So we've already looked at lead filters. So this time we're going to be looking at account filters and building our search out here. So it's just a slightly different layout. And you can see lead filters previously and now account filters. So let's begin to build our search. So we've got company headcount 500 to 5,000. So let's go here. We want 500 up to 5,000. We also want revenue of about a million plus. Let's go revenue, annual revenue. Here we go. Choose your currency. I think in this case, we're going by euro. Obviously, you choose whatever um, currency you want to, to search by. US dollar, I guess, is the most globally recognizable. So we're going by 1 million. It's asking me to specify a max. So we don't want giant companies at this point. So we're going to go up to 10 million. And I'm just going to add that. And you can see every similar to our lead search, every time we add criteria, we our search size declines. I think it starts at about 50 million companies. Now we're down to about 4,000 companies. Okay, so we want to get that down a lot more specific. What else is important? We want company headcount growth. Yes. So let's look at headcount growth. We've got company headcount growth and department headcount growth. I am looking for company headcount growth. Yes. So here we just specify what type of growth we're looking at. So let's just go from 1% to about 10% growth. We don't want massive growth, but just, a, just generally increasing. And now we've got about a thousand companies that are growing within this size and also that revenue. Okay, so now we're just going to add in the normal searches that we used previously. So things like industry and then also our geography. I'm going to add industry, telecom, automotive, and finance. So let's go by industry. We want telecom, automotive. Let's go by finance. And then so now we have 73 companies. Let me just add the last two. So software, computer software, and information technology. So now we've got 138 searches. We want our geography to be UK, Europe, and Ireland. So let's look at that. Headquarter location. This is interesting because often it's important to know that the decision maker 
headquarter is also in the geography that you want. So if we target companies with a headquarter in the United Kingdom, a headquarter in Ireland and a headquarter in Europe, this is going to be quite specific. And they, we're not going to find that reaching out to these decision makers means that would they defer us to, sorry, our headquarters is in New York or something, you have to reach out to them. We want to know that the actual location is the, the real decision makers are the people that we're reaching out to. Okay, in this case, technology used is not something that's terribly relevant to us, but if, if that's relevant to you, so for example, you want to know companies are using certain type of social media or Google Analytics software, or maybe you, you're marketing a competitor product to Shopify or to Salesforce or something, you could find companies that are using a technology and then target them to say, oh, well, I see that you're using Salesforce, but we've actually got a superior product or something. Number of followers is only really if you're trying to target companies that have a big following on LinkedIn. I don't really use that. Fortune, obviously, is whether you're targeting people on certain Fortune lists. And department headcount and growth is important if you, and department headcount and growth is important if you're, say, working with a very specific department. So, for example, the sales team. And you want to know that the sales team is kind of growing or shrinking. That can be quite important if you help companies that are declining. So if they're losing staff and actually going into the negatives, then you can be reaching out to them about how I help you recruit or I help you retain your staff or, or train people and empower your teams and things like that. If you want to be looking for companies that are hiring and you're able to fill vacancies and then recent activities is whether the, the leadership has changed or whether they've received funding events. So that's interesting if you're wanting to target companies that are either looking for investment or have recently received investment and maybe you're able to help them kind of scale and grow their operations while they're in a growth phase, things like that. So you can see there's a lot of data here, a lot of interesting details. But essentially, what I found is 13 companies. So I'm quite happy with that at this point, because I've got my industry, my location, and the right size of company. I'm just going to save this search, and I'm going to call it Agile Coaching UK and Europe, my account search, just save that there. And this will always be visible up here. You've got your saved leads and save account searches up here that you can always find them again. The next step is to go through each of these one by one and to begin to look at them in more detail. So what I've got here is a, a range of different financial services, automotive and information technology service companies. So if I look into Retex, what I'm going to see is some interesting details. I can see account alerts. So any kind of news that's being posted and, and recent things that helps me personalize that. I can see that there's 171 employees and there's 22 decision makers, which is of interest to me because obviously I'm targeting the decision makers. I can obviously also find their, their website and things and just validate that this is actually the right range of company for me. I can also add a note here. So if I wanted to note to myself any of my own activity here, I can add that there. If we scroll down, we have what's really interestingly called a an account map. Now, this is giving me a pre-created account map, but I'm able to edit this. So I, I can move this guy around. It's a bit like a sticky note. You can move them around. If somebody on this left-hand side is of interest to me, I can bring them onto my account map. So if I'm looking for, let's have a find, let's see if I can find someone. No, nobody jumps out at me right now, but there's obviously a lot of decision makers here. Okay, chief digital and business data unit. So maybe that's interesting to me. I'm just going to pull her into my account map and I'm just going to pop her there. And I can see that she's now here in my tier two. And maybe I want to actually bring her up to tier one. Maybe I'm not interested in uh, Chiara, who's head of the um, board of directors, so I can just remove her. So you can see that this is uh, quite a dynamic kind of way of mapping different decision makers. And the other way I can look at it is actually just go straight here to the 22 decision makers here. And now I've got 22 results. And this look is actually now a lead search, but it's a lead search within the company. So if I want to further nuance this, I can go by the keyword product and then further refine that. So if I wanted 
product manager, it gives me zero results. So essentially what I want to do is then just go down this list and be looking at these different people. So I've already decided that Fabiana is interesting, chief digital and business data unit. So I'm just going to, um, I can either just connect with her or um, she's already saved uh, to my leadership list. So that's great. And then I would just keep looking down the head of technology. Probably this guy is interesting. So I might, what I might do is save him to my list, which is agile coaching leads. Here we go. And then head of operations, managing director. So probably managing director might be interesting. Another managing director, senior project manager. Okay, so I'm just going to save these all to my list as agile coaching leads. So you see how within the company, I'm now finding a range of leads to pursue. Come back to my saved searches and I can go into my account saved searches. Here's my agile coaching UK saved search. And maybe I want to create, Retex is quite an interesting one. So I might create a list here of agile coaching accounts. And I'll just create and save that. And then that's always here in that account list. And then I could do the same. I could go into Actinium. I could have a look at, you know, there's 500 employees. You know, there's the right revenue size. I see a bit of action over this side. And I can either scroll down and look at the decision makers here. I can see that they, I can, or I can look into this decision maker list and repeat the process. So go through and look at, so someone in data analytics might be interesting to reach out to and someone in software development might be interesting to look out to. So then I'm going to save them to my list, my agile coaching leads, and I might go back. It's saved already. If I go back and I can save Actemium to my agile coaching UK and Europe list. So my account list now, I've got two in my agile coaching Europe account list here. I've saved these two and I can add notes about those companies and I'm growing my lead list. So I've now got 15 in my agile coaching list and I can create notes and things. So I think basically you can see how able to just build searches, both create account lists and lead lists using the, the account search feature and the lead search feature. Okay, so now I'm, I'm inside of the decision maker search within this company, Retex. What I can do is also use these things like spotlights. I can filter by people who've changed jobs recently and I can reach out with some personalized information to say, hi, I notice you've got, you've changed your job. I could also be targeting people who are actually active on LinkedIn and make sure that I'm only targeting the people who are really present on LinkedIn and things like that. I can be targeting people who are relatively new in the company or, or been in the company a long time, relatively new in their position or been in their position for a long time, things like that. I could filter further by, you know, their function within the company, whether they're within, within engineering or sales and things like that. Yeah, so you can see the power of these of these different searches and how you're able to build a really tight list. So what's next? Now that we're able to build really tight lists of decision makers, leads and accounts, the next step is to begin to obviously add people systematically. You can add up to 100 a week using LinkedIn and you can begin a direct outreach to your saved list. So you can research them, personalize them and begin to add them and and reach out to them. In other training, I'm going to show how you're able to export data and use these lead lists as the source of finding things like email addresses, telephone numbers, postal mail, and other ways of reaching out to the similar list. And then really it's just up to you about systematically messaging them and then booking the calls. So that brings us to the end of this training. Thanks for staying with it so far, and I look forward to seeing you in the next training.